thank you, thank you. And Luke, you're like 12. I, you know, I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking um, about young people and how I feel like I'm getting a lot older. Um, Chelsea was here today, wasn't she? Did she do a good job? Let me see, Chelsea. She was 13 years old when she moved into the White House. Um, and can you just even imagine what that life must be like when you're, you know, 13 years old and you feel kind of weird. She's 13 years old and she's living in the White House trying to not feel kind of weird. Um, but I was thinking about family. I was thinking about the pipeline of leadership that we have, people who, like Luke, 12-year-olds uh, like Luke, who are there, and, and then Earl. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then Earl. But you know, do you love Earl? Yes, do you yeah, love? So good. Let me thank you. Oh, let me thank you. <laughs> you know, Earl has the weirdest heart that I know of, and he's and and he is he is like the kindest, most wonderful person. He likes to keep that hidden. And I just want to mention on this side of the of the aisle here, um, and my sisters over here, Becky and Princess. I am probably the most blessed NEA president in the world to have people of this caliber working with me and working for you. Please give it up for this executive committee. And then you have Debbie over here, who just blows me away. You really do. Yes, yes. Who's just, you know, she looks nice. She looks like a nice person, but um, she is a tiger. She is a fighter. She just has this wonderful way of explaining to people how she is going to get what she needs, and you are going to give it to her, and, and you're going to smile, you're gonna, and you just say, yes, ma'am. And uh, she just has this way of saying, because this is what I need for my colleagues to serve their students. Um, this is, we need this to do our jobs. And you want to do whatever she tells you to do. This is just an amazing group of leaders up here and I just wanted to start with them because I really do feel like they're my family. Um, and I got to spend um, one day this week, it was my little granddaughter's first birthday. We'll be showing pictures later. Um, I don't have I don't have TVs. I show you pictures of what's her name, Lily Joe. Yeah, she's in the will. I'm telling you, this is really cool. And I'm I took Lily Joe away from my son and his lovely wife, and I said, she's mine all day long. I will change diapers, I will feed her, I will, you know, I will take care of her all day long. And I had her in her stroller, and it reminded me. I remember, and this is why I feel so old today, I remember my son's first stroller. I got it with green stamps. <laughs> Maury, you don't even know what green stamps are. Eric, you do not even know. George, oh yeah, George, yeah, okay. Grandpa knows, all right. I'm telling you, I'm sitting here going, what is it that we have, uh, you know, that, that we have forgotten, that we grew up with? How many of you remember aluminum Christmas trees? Oh, hello, okay. How many of you remember the end of a broadcasting day? When the TV went off? Yeah, and how many of you have ever seen a test pattern? Metal ice cube trays, you had to. How many of you remember a time when no one ever said these words in the same sentence? I lost my phone. <laughs> Phones were these big old suckers attached to the wall with bolts. 
You could actually use them to attack people that broke into your house. You could, it was amazing. How many of you have children in your 40s, don't raise your hand, and you're still 39? We can pull this off. We can totally pull this off. And I just started thinking, when I started thinking of Chelsea Clinton um, and where she's come from being 13 years old now to being a surrogate spokesperson for her mother who is running for president of the United States of America. And if you're watching what's happening on the news right now, you got to hope that an adult wins this thing, you know? You just got to you just got to hope. Um, but the times they are a changing and the toys are changing and the technology's changing and everything's moving so fast and I, you, you just think, I can't keep up with how many things. Every time they tell me I need a new phone, I cringe, because I don't, it's going to take me another year to figure out how to put my contact list in this new phone. It's like, how about if I just, if I just get to a pay phone and call my mom, and there aren't any pay phones anymore. But there are some things, and I think it takes this conference to remind me that there are some things that never change. There are some things that never go out of style. There are some things that are never going to grow old. Um, and I look at us, and I think, we have got this attitude that gets us in trouble a lot, but it brings us into a room like this. I had an attitude some people would say attitude problem. I had an interesting attitude when I was Miss Lily uh, in the lunchroom, then as a Head Start teacher's assistant, and then as a teacher. If something didn't make any sense to me or it seemed like it was unfair, I would go, why are we doing that? Oh, because we have to. Why do we have to do that? Well, it's in the contract. How do you change a contract? Well, see, it's the law, the governor. How do you change the governor? You know, and you just kind of go until people start to go, oh, yeah, that isn't right. We should change that. And you bring people together, and sometimes you change something little, and sometimes you change the world. And that's the business we're in. And we know how important we are. Um, I get in trouble on a regular basis because it's in my job description now. Um, but I get introduced a lot, thanks. Sometimes it's not that nice. Uh, Luke was very nice. Sometimes it's, it's in a different kind of venue and it's like, and now, speaking on behalf of the nasty education union we have, uh, depending on how you're being introduced. But I always tell people if they come up beforehand and say, how do you want to be introduced? Um, they want to read your resume. And I said, you know what? I started as a lunch worker. I, I was Miss Lily, the, um, the teacher assistant, and I was a sixth grade teacher for 20 years. So do that. Talk about um, what I was uh, to a child. And then say who's serving as the NEA president. And time and time again when I tell people that, they go, oh, Lily. You are so humble. And I said, oh, you don't get it. No, no, see, that's me showing off. I have had 39 fifth graders on rainy day recess when half of the bathrooms didn't work. You cannot scare me. You cannot put something in front of me that I can't do. And they don't understand how proud we are of our day jobs. And that these assignments that we may have, these elections we might win, to actually lead a piece of our union, local, state, national, in the building as a rep, that that comes from us being so proud of doing such important work, of saying some kid's life is going to be a little bit better because of some little piece of that education puzzle that I'm going to be able to put 
in place for that child. Um, it, runs in my, it runs in my family. My little sister, Dee Dee, um, runs the HR department at Murray School District. Uh, she is not only a member, she is their uh, local president for the ESP group at Murray School District. Yes, she's, she's fabulous and could not be here today because they, you know, the HR director could actually like disappear for six months and no one would even notice. If she takes a long lunch, things fall apart. I went to an NEA, uh, um, I, when I go to an NEA RA, I always say hello to every state and I always start with Utah, my state. and. <laughs> Hello, Utah. I knew you'd be out there. So I go over to, to the Utah delegation, and um, Dee Dee was a um, delegate that year. And so I told people, I said, be really nice to my little sister over here, Dee Dee McDougall. And um, she's, a, you know, she's a, a delegate, and blah, 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 blah. And then I left, and this guy came running after me. And he said, and they have separate um, associations. So they have the, uh, the classified association and they have the teachers association. He was in the teachers association in Murray. So he comes running, he said, Didi McDougall is your sister? And I said, no, I'm Didi McDougall's sister. It <laughs> matters how you do that. He said, we love her. She knows everything about our 401k. She knows what the sick leave policy is. She helps us get substitutes. She does everything. Um, and, and he, you know, he, he hyperventilated, which really bothered me because he was so impressed that she was my little sister and it had nothing to do with me. Um, <laughs> and it's all about me. That, that really hurt. <laughs> I remember, um, I remember when we adopted my little boy, um, Jared, who is the dad of my Lily Jo, um, and he's still 12, which is amazing. Um, <laughs> but Jared came to us as a special needs uh, child who had had a very, very tough four years in his life. And I brought him to Orchard um, Elementary after school and uh, we'd be putting up bulletin boards and we'd be um, grading papers and, and he wasn't quite sure what to make of this person who told him to call uh, her mom. He was having a really tough time with that. And it was Steve, our school custodian and my very, very good friend, who would come in and say uh, to him, you know, I need some help in the in the uh, multi-purpose room. Why don't you come and help me sweep? And he gave Jared something to do, to go and sweep, and he'd ask him about his life, and he'd uh, play basketball with him. And he had that connection with my family. It, it is family. All of us in this room, I walk in the room, and people will come up and give me a hug, and we'd, you know, wherever we left off the conversation last year, we just pick it right back up and we keep going. I look at how we come together, and you can't phone this in. You have to make these very human connections. I don't care what kind of technology we have, and we do a lot of things with technology now. We can have meetings with technology, but there's something that happens when we come together and we remember uh, to be friends. We remember to be family. Um, this really is a sacred trust for us being in this union, in this very special family. And maybe it's where I come from. I tend to see religious analogies in so much of what we do. Um, the Utah State Legislature passed a law where we had to take vows of poverty and obedience. They tried chastity, but that didn't really um, <laughs> go too far. And, junior high students speaking in tongues and I remember my older son Jeremy when he was a little kid he was maybe four years old and he had been having some argument on the uh, playground and he came running in and he said mom is there really a hell and I think you have to be really straightforward with kids so I said well hon what do you think and he said mom 
I don't think God would have a place like hell. I think he'd have a place like special ed where you could go if you need extra help. <laughs> My little theologian. So we're a family and this is our cause. This is something that is a sacred cause for us. We're warriors on a crusade, and you know that we're under attack, unless in your state things are different. Um, I've, not, I've not visited any state where they say, no, 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 the governor, the state legislature, everybody just loves us, Chamber of Commerce, everyone's just throwing money at us and, and just being great. Um, we're under attack by organized folks like the Koch brothers, billionaires. We're under attack by little mom and pop cave groups, the CAVE, the Citizens Against Virtually Everything. Uh, they're out there. Uh, they want to tell us what kind of books to teach from. They want to tell us that anybody could do our jobs. And we know better. We know that we're professionals. We know that what we have here is not some old-fashioned, old-timey thing. Uh, there are people out there that would say, oh, you don't need a union. Unions are old-fashioned. Unions are Mother Jones, for goodness sakes. Unions are, unions are, unions are power. Unions are ordinary citizens, ordinary people who will never be billionaires, who didn't get into the billionaire business, but who believe fiercely that what we're doing protects the middle class, protects families, protects communities, that we fight for professional respect, professional pay, professional autonomy to do our jobs, and that when we're given what we need, that someone else's child blossoms and whether we are in the kitchen or holding a piece of chalk, we are all part of that team, part of that family, and we believe in our union. We're not old-fashioned. We're not a Facebook page. We are what stands between success and failure for someone else's child, and we fight for them every day. So I cannot be humble. I look at our attitude, and it's the same. 30 years later when I started, it's the same attitude that keeps us going. I look at our teamwork, and it's the same dynamic that says we love each other and we respect each other, and we're going to hold together in solidarity. I look at what it means to fight for a cause you believe in, a cause like public education that's under attack. And I know that we are going to do whatever it takes to make sure that our boys and girls from preschool to graduate school have our voice and we will have their backs. We are professionals and what we do will never get old. It'll never go out of style. We will always be the cool kids. There is um, a tradition that'll never get old for me either, and it's why I'm up here, um, other than to show pictures of Lily Joe, which we'll be showing later in the program. Um, it is my honor to be able to um, celebrate our ESPs of the year. Um, our state and local affiliates can uh, nominate their ESP of the year to be considered for the national, the one and only ESP of the year. And there's nothing like it. I remember when my colleagues uh, nominated me for the teacher of the year. And I know those of you that are here representing your states, I know you had the same feeling I had when you were awarded this amazing recognition. You're, it's, a, it's a mix between I'm not worthy and this is so cool. I love it. Because it is cool. Somebody noticed 
that you're incredible and you're fantastic and you're going, I knew that. I just didn't realize anybody else could see it. And they can. To get this award, um, your name wasn't pulled out of a hat. And I do want to tell you how excited we are. Uh, and I think that Roxanne mentioned it earlier. But you just have to know, we have been working on getting a national ESP of the year recognized through a congressional act so that it wouldn't just be something that um, uh, someone would do and then decide not to do, that it would be something in the congressional act, an ESP of the year. We've been trying to get um, that bill passed for years now. Uh, if you've tried to get anything through Congress, you know how tough that that has been. Uh, but President Obama announced a little earlier that even though we wouldn't have a congressional act of ESP of the year, there was absolutely nothing that would prevent the president from honoring ESPs. And so in May, there will be a White House ceremony to recognize the ESP Champions of Change. And we will be nominating uh, our ESPs, um, and we will be, the President's Committee will decide, but NEA will be in the House, and we will be well represented with our ESPs. That brings us to a time, you see all those people walking over? They're going, is it time? Yes, it's time. Because we are going to ask our state ESPs of the year to come across the stage, to introduce themselves to you, their names, where they're from, and what they do. You know that we have our job categories, what they do. Uh, and then we'll be taking pictures. I'm going to ask our executive committee to be uh, here mm -hmm. as, a, as a welcoming committee as they come across the stage. And you know how people always tell you to hold your applause to the end? I don't want you to do that. I want you to be wild and crazy uh, with each and every one of your colleagues who gets to stand in this special spotlight. And when we have introduced all of the ESPs of the year that have been nominated, I will have the pleasure of introducing you to the winner who does not know that um, they've been selected. So it's a big surprise. So we will now begin. All right. We will now begin with Alabama. Good evening. My name is Lynn Gardner. I'm a secretary at Robinson Elementary. Yay, yeah, secretaries. Robinson Elementary School in Fairfield, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Hello. My name is Laura Montgomery, and, and I'm representing the great state of Arkansas. Good evening. My name is Cindy Tercero Sandoval, and I am from Arizona. I am a dropout prevention coordinator. Greg from California and I and I'm a special education para educator
Good evening, my name is Bernie Kemp. I'm, I'm from the Sunshine State, Florida, and I'm a community liaison. Good evening. <laughs> My name, <laughs> I love you. My name is Jeanette Griffin Kimber from the great state of Georgia. It is my honor to be here this evening. Hola. My name is Diana Patricia Roberts. I am representing the beautiful state of Iowa. I am a English language learner and special education paraeducator and the school district's interpreter. Hi, my name is Stacy Aspiazu Johnson. I'm a special ed parapro in Idaho. Good evening, my name is India Jones. I'm a computer assistant from Illinois. Good evening, my name is Tammy Neville from Indiana and I am a bus driver. Good evening, I am Lakila Badeau from Paducah, Kentucky. And I am the coordinator of Tornado Alley Youth Services Center. Hi, I'm Michelle Elwell from Massachusetts, paraeducator. Good evening, my name is Becky Hespin. I am from the great state of Minnesota, who is over there. For 23 years, I have been in ESP in a special ed classroom, but this is my 24th year, and I am now the full-time release union president for the ESPs in my district. Good evening. I'm Sonia Marie Burks from the Show Me State of Missouri. And I am a paraeducator. Hi, my name is Sue Stewart. I'm from Montana, and I'm a paraeducator for, for Montana School for the Deaf and the Blind. Good evening. I'm Heidi Shostek from North Dakota. I'm an in-school suspension paraeducator. Good evening. My name is Pat Niehaus. I'm from the state of New Jersey. And I'm a special ed uh, uh, paraprofessional. Buenas tardes. My name is Henry Armendariz from the great state of New Mexico. Maintenance, thank you. Sorry, I'm Annie McClintock. I'm a I'm a one-on-one -on -one special education paraeducator from New York State. Hello, my name is Mary Hargreaves, and I am a paraprofessional in the great state of Ohio. Ohio! Buenas noches, good evening. My name is Diana Garcia Hernandez, and I'm proud to be a secretary in the state of Oregon. Good evening, my name is Linda Lowe, I'm a lunch lady from the biggest little state in the Union, Rhode Island. Hi, I'm Willie Mae Hampton, and I'm a special ed para from South Carolina. Hi, 
I'm Betty Sokol, a secretary from Todd County, South Dakota. Good evening, I'm Bonnie Najera, and I'm from El Paso, Texas, y'all. <laughs> I'm a parent liaison in Socorro ISD. Good evening, everyone. My name is Colleen Moocher, and I am from Park City, Utah. Yeah. And I do special ed paraprofessional. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Tanya Latrice Hutchison from the state of Virginia, and I'm a preschool special education assistant. Good evening. I'm Jan Olmsted from the state of Washington, and I'm a special ed uh, paraeducator. Good evening. My name is Dorothy Robinson. I'm from Wisconsin. And I'm a paraeducator in the special ed department. represent your local or your state is an amazing accomplishment. It's an amazing honor. Um, to be chosen as the one, the only, the NEA ESP of the year is something else. Uh, to win this award, you were, uh, you were vetted by a committee of your colleagues, and they looked to see your commitment to your professional practice. Are you an incredible professional? They looked to see what you did to advance your community. They looked to see what you did to advance your union. And they looked to see your commitment to the students that were counting on you. Among all of those that are nominated, we wanted to find one that we could point to, that we could say of all of the incredible professionals in our ESP ranks, this is the person who represents who we are when we are at our best. Our 2016 ESP of the Year grew up in a community that she now works in. It is the poorest county in the state. The needs of the whole child come walking in the door in this school, in that county, every day, and those needs start at home. This ESP volunteered to coordinate gathering things and distributing things like bedding and cooking supplies to help the neighbors that were devastated by a fire. She comforted colleagues who suffered the death of a child. She serves as a Cub Scout leader to make sure that her students had the best she could offer, she learned American Sign Language, took classes in child development, but there is absolutely nothing soft and sentimental about this union activist. She is as strong in her union as in her community. She helped keep one of her custodians from being laid off. She helped stop an effort to decertify a local ESP affiliate. She stood up to her superintendent when they were told there's nothing you can do about your health care plan. 
um, they differed, and under her leadership, they organized, and they became the Lakeport United Classified <laughs> Employees Association. When the California Teachers Association opened their uh, doors to full membership for ESPs. She helped write the ESP affiliate bylaws. She has walked picket lines. She has led rallies. She has gone door to door for education friendly candidates. There is not a humble bone in her body because she knows how important her work is and that makes her fearless. She is a leader in every sense of the word. She is a leader who will never go out of style. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2016 ESP of the Year, Doreen McGuire Grigg. Doreen will get this really cool uh, um, trophy, some fabulous roses, oh yeah, and this little check for $10,000. Um, I work every day really hard for my kids, just like all of you do. But if it weren't for my family standing behind me and having my back, I would never be able to do what I do. I, my husband, <laughs> I'm away from him a lot, and he still puts up with me. <laughs> um, <laughs> the students in my class call me by my substitute's name. Sometimes. Other times they call me mom. <laughs> um, so not only do I have a family that's blood, I have my union family, my CTA family, my NEA family. Paula Monroe, my mentor, she's in Washington, happily retired. It's good for her. Oh, breathe. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you all for everything you do every day. You get up, 
Some days you don't want to get up and go there, but you do. And you don't do it for the money. <laughs> you do it because you know that's where you belong. And you're there for the students, our kids, the ones that are going to take care of us one day. So I've been listening lately about some of the stuff I've been doing. And it's apparent that I say a lot when we're not included. And I just want you to know, I'm not going to stop. <laughs> I want you all to know that I'm not going to stop. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to fight for all of you. I'm going to fight for our kids. I'm going to fight to get a Democrat in the White House. I know kids that need health insurance. I know that I'm going to need health insurance in a few years. I know that, I mean, maybe one day I'll get to retire. That's the few years. But I just... Thank you all. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, and I wouldn't be able to do what I do if it wasn't for all of you and everybody that's in the classroom, on the bus, on the playground. I just keep thinking of my groundskeeper, um, my maintenance workers, the people that got me where I am today, my members that have pushed me to do the work because they weren't treated fairly. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dana and Sonia and Jackie and, and Janet. Janet. <laughs> Janet Eberhardt. Oh, my. <laughs> Janet, thank you for everything you've done. <laughs> I, I think I'm, thanks. I think I better say goodbye. <laughs> I want to thank you all. Uh, Earl, are there, are there other parting um, um, instructions about turtles or anything else that you want the, to say? The last person they need to see and hear from is you. All right, now there's two ways to take that. The last person they need to see and hear from is you. All right, so I'm going to take it in the sweet way because you would never say anything Please that wasn't do. sweet with a really That's cute right. accent. That's right. Okay, so I want to thank you. Uh, we want we congratulate all of our ESPs of the year. We we thank Janet who's going out and Doreen who's coming in. And now it's time to dance. And now it's time to party. See you all at the party. Thank you.